Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father, for the days that we live in right now. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us through the fire. So many of us have gone through such challenging times. And we thank you, Father, for every, every, every challenge, every chastening, every moment that we slip and fall because we learn something new. And we're able to touch other people's lives in a way that we could never have touched them before. We're able to empathize with their challenges and be able to witness to them and and touch their lives and give them joy. Father, we thank you for choosing us before the foundations of the world for a time such as this. Psalm 139, verse 16, Ephesians 2, verse 10. We thank you, Father, for the help us to walk. We ask you in the name of Jesus to help us to walk in the works which you have written about each of us since before, I believe, before there was time. Father, I thank you. I praise your holy name. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will strengthen us. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up us with wings of eagles. They will walk and not be weary. They will run and not faint. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for all the things that are happening across the world that are keeping us on the edge of our seats. We praise you, Father God, for helping us to be able to discern. And we pray for a golden cup of discernment to be poured out even greater a greater golden cup of discernment to be poured out out upon our spirits that we will be able to sift our way through the chaff of the prophetic words that are just rifling across the internet right now in a way that we have never seen the seducing spirits, Father God, hitting both sides, both camps, not even the, not just the pillow prophets, but also the people that believes they're, they're prophesying the end times, Father, the quagmire of noise that is out there right now is absolutely almost impossible to discern, and we need a special touch of the Holy Spirit to be able to sift our way through these things. We thank you, Father God, for having awakened us so many years ago, all the way back to 2011, and indeed even to 20, 2009, to start tracking the prophecies back then before the noise level got so high that the signal to noise ratio was absolutely indiscernible. Oh, well, Lord God, we praise you for giving us that catalog of information before the seducing spirits were released upon the world. We thank you, Father God, for helping us to be able to plug in and and connect the dots between the the, the prophetic data points across so many years of time, indeed, maybe even hundreds of years in some cases, and be able to figure out and filter out those things which are the most important that we can keep our eyes on, that will keep us on the edge of our seats, that we know that we are in that time. Indeed, we are in that season, that we need to stay and draw in closer to you, that there will never be enough of you in any of our lives. We pray for overflow. We pray for increase in the name of Jesus. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fill us in the name of Jesus, for our cups to be overfilled, for our love to be overfilled, that we will be drawn into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and be changed, be turned into the new wineskins in the name of Jesus, that we are able to receive the new wines when the suddenlies come upon this earth and that we are ready for the days that are ahead of us. More than ready, ready to lead the way in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for you alone are worthy. We praise you, Father God. We worship you because you are awesome. You are our good, good Father. And we just, we cannot express, we cannot express our obsession and our absolute love for all things of the kingdom. For as it says in praise you, Jesus, that we are citizens of heaven and that we should keep our minds not stayed, uh, keep our minds stayed upon things above and not things of this world. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, with your anointing, that that is exactly how we will live every moment of our life until the day that you bring us home to glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. And now the hymn, Lord Jesus, who is able to keep us from stumbling and present us faultless before the presence of your glory, Father God, with exceeding joy. In the throne room, before the courts of heaven. Hallelujah. And to you, Father, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, it is absolutely amazing. It has been degrading out there in the internetosphere, uh, you know, pretty consistently now for an awful long time. And um, I, I, I never anticipated it. I mean, I, I, what I anticipated to see, what I did anticipate to see is that the pillow prophets and the furry white kitten, huggy, white, huggy bunny prophets would continue to do the seven mountain dance. And, you know, and, and Jesus is, you know, married America. And again, and all this, you know, Trumpianity and blah, 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 blah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I, you know, you, you expect that when you read the, the Stanley Fodgham prophecy about the seducing periods. But what you don't think you're going to see, or at least I didn't think I was going to see it, was um, a, a dynamic whereby the seducing spirits are also peppering uh, the uh, uh, the. Um, 
um, the people that are, you know, supposedly or claimedly, um, uh, uh, you know, prophesying and time stuff, you know, warnings about judgment and things like that. So I really do thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. You know, I can see now, you know, how many of you out there? I don't know. I mean, tell me, tell me, how many of you out there by praise offering for Jesus? How many of you out there can look back on your life? Just look back on your life and say, that's impossible. Uh, you know, but you have to be at a particular point in your growth where you're able to understand. Because as time goes on, you learn more, right? Amen? Praise Jesus. So what happens is, is, is more, as you learn more, as you go through more trials, tribulations, difficulties, learning experiences, you get, you get better and more familiar with the Word of God. Psalm 119, verse 11, I've written your word on my heart, Lord, that I might not sin against thee. When you are walking and, and practicing righteousness to the best of your ability, doesn't mean that you won't fall doesn't mean that you won't sin. We all live in a state of sin. Uh, you know, again, Romans 14, 23. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me just double check my brain on that one. Um, I don't know. I think it's 14, 23. I'm pretty sure it is. B, it's the second part after the semicolon where it says that which is not faith from faith is sin. Well, gee whiz, folks. I mean, how many people, you know, even Jesus said to his apostles, he's like, oh, ye of little faith, which translated really means, oh, you sinners. Okay, because that which is not from faith is sin. Amen. All right. So anyway, so, um, you know, so there's proof positive that we're always going to be in a state of sin. Uh, but, you know, but we got to be practicing righteousness and self-examination. Uh, second, you know, first Corinthians 11, uh, 28, 31 and 32. Praise you, Jesus. If we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we do not judge ourselves, um, you know, we'll be chastened by God. Praise God. And um, but anyway, you know what? You know, it's it's amazing to see what's going on out there. Not that not that I'm especially happy to see it. But what I do see uh, and, uh, is, is the noise level, as I said in the prayer, signal-to-noise ratio is getting – well, and for those of you who don't know what a signal-to-noise ratio is, imagine you know you have an, a record album, and the album's kind of – I am, and I'm going back into like the 70s and the early 80s when everybody had like a turntable of some kind, or almost everybody. And, um, uh, you know, and, and back then, you, know, you would have these albums that weren't really well taken care of, and you'd put them on the turntable, and you'd have this sh- – and then you, you'd have like, you know, Captain and Tennille, you know, trying to break through the noise, you know, going, my scrat, my scrat, la, 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 you know, but you, you'd be trying, you know, you'd hear all this noise. But when the noise gets so, so loud, you know, the scratching of the album or the noise or the fuzz or whatever, when that gets so loud that it's hard to hear the muskrat, muskrat stuff coming through it, that means that you have a poor signal to noise ratio. Your noise is very high. And then it becomes very difficult to hear the signal, which is the music in that case, with that example. Well, in the case of prophecies, dreams, and visions, what we have right now, where it is deteriorated to the point right now, uh, and um, and uh, you know, I'm sure I've got sucker punched plenty of times over the last couple of years as as the deterioration uh, it continued. But I praise God and thank you, Jesus, that I'm uh, you know because of having been collecting and cataloging prophecies, dreams, and visions going all the way back to 2009, and not just the ones that started in 2009, but also collecting, reviewing, reading books, uh, you know, uh, putting them into Word documents, uh, you know, doing radio shows that were completely dedicated to prophecies and dreams and visions, uh, you know, and putting all of that stuff in, you know, and, and going back into the 1700s, Mother Shipton stuff into the 1600s, Nostradamus stuff back that far. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And then connecting the dots and correlating it and saying, okay, well, this matches this and that matches that. And this was, you know, Mother Shipton said, Shipton said, you know, she saw, Shipton said she saw this and that matches Nostradamus, which also matches, you know, this brother, uh, you you know, from A.A. Allen or whatever, 1954, or whatever, and you can connect all the dots, and then you start pulling out the major data points, and then you know. You know, you have correlation. You have cross-pollination and confirmation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we need that extra confirmation. The Lord bashed me up upside the head, as a metaphor, uh, you know, or analogy or whatever, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, many times to help me to understand that you can't always just, depending on what the situation is and whatever, but I'm not going to get into all the details. That's a whole other teaching, but Depending on the situation, you may need to be looking, especially in today's day and age, you need to be looking for confirmation. We need to be getting confirmations from God. You know, if you're casting lots, that's great. But you, maybe you better cast lots more than once. 
You know, just, you know, there's, there's way too many demonic influences. There's way too many seducing spirits out there. There's way too many human desires. There's presumptuous sin that have woven its way into people's hearts, and they don't even know what it is. They don't even know their scripture. They, they're, they're, they're absorbed and overtaken by the desire to please mankind and to have somebody pat them on the back so badly that they're just, you know, whatever. Hey, as long as somebody out there agrees with them, they're fulfilled. And that isn't really the way it ought to be. But I've talked about this time and time and time again. Praise God. I've said so many times that, that I believe with all of my heart, and I still believe this, is that the best prophecies, the best prophets of time uh, over all time were the ones who really didn't participate in any type of social media whatsoever or were prophesying before there was any such thing as social media or the Internet sphere. Don't even get me going on Jeremiah, Isaiah, you know, Obadiah and all these other prophets, Zechariah, you know, they, they didn't have, you know, the Internet of sphere. They weren't walking in. They didn't have like clubs of people coming around and saying, oh, brother, hi, you know, the Lord showed me the same thing. And everybody was out there going, yay. And, you know, and no, that that that's a type of collusion. I, it's 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 almost like, um I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know, know if there's a proper word, but God told, tells us that we're not supposed to seek the approval of men, particularly when you're supposedly in the office of a prophet. And and as soon as you're out there in a forum and you're all patting each other on the back and, you know, and people, you know, you're, you're no longer independent. See, I know a little bit about the, the concept of being independent because in, in the profession that the Lord has thrust me into <laughs> many, many years ago, praise God, thank you, Jesus. Again, this is one of those things where you look back. How many people, again, have you can look back on their lives 10, 20, 30 years in some cases and see these major events that happen in their lives where you know that the hand of God was on it, and you're like, there's no way that happened to me by accident. Again, it's uh, Psalm 139, verse 16, Ephesians 2, 10, praise God, that we should walk in the works that God has written about us. I think before there was time, but before we were born, it says for sure, uh, you know, but how many of you can look back on those things and say, wow, I mean, praise, give, give, the, give praise to the Lord Jesus if you're one of them. Hallelujah, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, praise God. But you know what? One of the things that you learn when you start doing, when you get out and, and, you know, and you start doing stuff, especially, you know, if it's a, if it's a radio program or a website or whatever the case is, is you're going to, st- people are going to revile you. You're going to be under attack. Uh, you're not just going to get a night, you know, a metaphorical knife stuck in your back. You're going to get a chainsaw, an 18 inch, uh, you know, a big, bad, mean chainsaw. And it's going to be shoved right through the, right through the middle of your back, cut your heart out and, and just, you know, and whatever. Uh, and and, and then you are. You really, really are. And people will, you know, they're going to say in the most loving way, oh, I love you, brother, but there's always going to be that but. There's always going to be that but. And then here comes the chainsaw. And then, you're, you know, your whole innards are falling out on the ground. And you're like, ah, oh, help me, help me. And, you know, and it's, it's very hard to get back up the next day. You know, it's very difficult to continue to do what it is that you are certain that the Lord, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have just, you know, waking up and they, you know, they grab a microphone, they go on YouTube, they do this, they do that and blah, 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 blah. But there's never been a prophecy over them. I've never had anybody say that, you know, in 40 years from now, you're going to be doing this. They just got an inkling one day and it had to be from God and they're out there doing blah, 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 blah. And they, they're just full steam ahead. Damn the torpedoes. And everybody tell me how wonderful I am. And look, you know, this person and this person is, you know, and we've entered into a time right now where the situation is very, very challenging, to say the least. No one's hardly anybody out there that I can see at all. They're not cross correlating. They're not getting confirmations. We're dealing with a desperately Bad signal to noise ratio right now. Really, really bad. Um, uh, You know, and it's one thing. Anyway, so I'm not going to I don't want to get lost in that because I could go on and on and on about that. Praise God. But over the years, I've had to block up to three pages. I don't know if you understand anything about using filters in Gmail, but filters in Gmail will allow you to block an email address. And I've had to. There have been people that, you know, they believe, you know, it, the, the scripture says in John 16, too, it says they will kick you out of the synagogues. Yes, there will come a time that they kill you and think they have done God a service, but they do this because they have not known the Father nor me. Well, here's the thing. That's not, that, that, that scripture is not just applicable uh, uh, to killing a, a fellow brother or sister because there's life and death and power of the tongue. Amen. <laughs> lower half of my body running down the road <laughs> right i mean really that's just it's just it's amazing praise god so um you know but it's okay 
because they have not known the love of the Father nor me. If you truly know the Lord, if you truly know our Father, if you truly know Jesus, you know a depth of love that is so deep. doesn't mean that you won't lovingly admonish somebody, and they may not receive it, and that's okay. It may hurt, and that's okay. They may not talk to you anymore, but that's okay. Um, these are all the things, you know, Paul, Paul and Barnabas had, had their sharp uh, moment, you know, between each other. They disagreed about something. That's, that's all right. I'm sure that they weren't like praying against one another or hating each other or setting up, you know, uh, 2000 year old websites or whatever. <laughs> Praise Jesus. But, you know, over the years, you know, you, you have what will happen is you'll have a lot of people that are like, you know, they come across as being very. I'm just this is a warning. This is admonish me. Be careful out there, folks, please. In the name of Jesus, I beseech thee. Be careful out there. There isn't a week, it seems, that goes by that somebody doesn't email me, and they're like, well, Johnny, have you seen this? And then my heart breaks because I see what they're showing me, and I'm like, oh. you know, I, I, I cannot emphasize enough how dangerous uh, how dangerous it is out there on the Internet here, how dangerous the information pool is out there in YouTube land. How dangerous it is out there in Facebook land. I have seen people with titles before their name, Reverend this and you know, Pastor that, saying things they shouldn't ought to say. You know, uh, most of the time it's not too bad, but sometimes it's not so good. Uh, sometimes it's awful. All right, uh, but you know, I just kind of keep my eyes and I, I, I duck it. I try to stay out of it as much as possible. The Lord shows me. The Lord shows me what I need to know. Or somehow I get a mysterious email at jbaptist777 at gmail.com, and it comes in from parts unknown, and then I'll be, uh, oh, oh, looky there. And that, that always happens. The Lord's been speaking to me through emails, uh, through uh, uh, instant messenger, mess, messenger messages of, of various kinds, all that kind of stuff over years and years and years. He talks to us in so many different ways that it's just amazing. Praise his name. All right, but, but anyway um, – what happens is you have to put up – you have to protect yourself after a while because the devil will use these people. See, here's the thing. What will happen is the, the devil will find a way to get a YouTube video in front of you that will mess you up. It'll, it'll blow – it'll mess you up. You'll hear something, that you, and you'll be confused, and you'll be like, oh, no, I don't know what to think about this. I, you know, and, blah, 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 and all this kind of thing. And you, know, you, know, and you may not – it could be – well, it could be very bad. Let's just put it that way. It could cause you to go or slip into behaviors that are very, very bad and will greatly, greatly risk the possibility that you may be chosen. Many are called, few are chosen to be part of the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen? All right, and this is a scary thing. It ought to be scary. If you are striving and trying very hard, practicing righteousness and the fear of God, uh, now knowing these things, brethren, let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, Second Corinthians 7, 1, alleluia. All right, now, if you are one of those people that, that aspire to be part of the bride of Jesus Christ, and you understand that many are called, but few are chosen. That we are to be praying always to be found worthy to escape all these things that come upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man, Luke twenty one thirty six. That's not just – that's praying always. There's no guarantees in any of that. As soon as I hear somebody out there, ah, you know, I'm, but, you know, or uh, calling themselves this or calling themselves that, I'm like, whoa, oh my. Talk about a presumptuous sin. I wouldn't want to be that person. I wouldn't want to. The last verse, the verse is last. I want to be the last. I want to be a foot washer. I do not want to presume anything. I want to have a contrite spirit, for God saves such as has a contrite spirit. Yeah, look at the parable that Jesus spoke in Luke 18 about the, ta you know, the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee. The Pharisee is out there, praise God, I'm this, praise God, I'm that, you know, I'm this, thank the Lord God, I'm not one of these people and one of those people. And Jesus holds up the tax collector who's out there beating his chest going, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. And Jesus points to him and says, that's what I'm looking for right there. See? But you don't see a lot of that out there in the Internet sphere, do you? Mm -mm. You don't. Humility is, well, it's just not there. <sighs> Paul said he, you know, that we are reviled, yet he, he was reviled, yet he would entreat. Do you not understand what the word entreat means? The word entreat basically means... Okay, brother, God bless you. Please do consider my thoughts. And, um, but, you know, God bless you. May the Lord keep you and bless you, shine his face upon you and give you, you know, and, and hallelujah. You know, but you, you, you entreat. It's a humble touch, and it's a stepping back, and that's it. 
and you let it go. Praise God. But yeah, over the years, I've had to block like three pages of uh, email addresses on my Gmail because people wouldn't stop. They keep coming at me. Oh, Lord, you know, the Lord has placed upon my heart. I am, you know, I am here to tell you that the Lord this and the Lord that. And the Lord's going to show you, Johnny. You're going to see. You know, the Lord loves you, Johnny. And the Lord's going to show you, Johnny. You're going to see that you were wrong. <laughs> You know, that's, you know, people don't realize, uh, you know, they will kick you out of the synagogue. There will come a day that they kill you. It's not just kill. It's to stick us, you know, a you know, metaphorical knife in your back. It cuts you in half with a chainsaw. It's all the other evil stuff. It's life and death and the power of the tongue. But people do not even understand the basics of human sociology and behavioral. But behaviors, people don't understand it. They're out there saying things they should not be saying. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And we are, you know what this is? This is a mark of the days that we live in right now. Praise God. This is something to give glory to God for because it, 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 it absolutely underscores the fact. That we are in that season right now. Praise Jesus. We want to be happy about this. These are confirmations of the days that we live in right now. And and this, hallelujah. I mean, if, if it wasn't for all this weirdness going on out there, uh, well, then I, I would have to say I would really be starting to, you know, wonder, hey, you know, um, you know, are we? No, it's all this extra stuff that confirms Absolutely beyond any shadow of a doubt that we are definitely in the season. And I believe with all of my heart that Obama will return as the Antichrist. I believe so far my mom has hit the ball out of my, my mother, uh, as, as believe me, unworthy as she was, and where none of us are worthy, uh, you know, except by the blood of Jesus and his mercy. Uh, you know, but but as <laughs> my mom, <clears throat> if you know, what I, you know, I know my mom. OK, and she's in heaven now. Praise, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. But um, I'm here to tell you. I, you know, that whole thing with, with you know, the, you know uh, Johnny, you know, I'm sitting there as a 10-year-old boy, just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in 1972, and, and you know, Johnny, the Lord gave me a vision of the Antichrist. He's a mulatto man, and he's your age. He's on the earth alive today. And the Lord didn't even bring it back to my recollection until after I had uh, gotten confirmations over the Internet th from various people out there, praise God, uh, uh, you know, that, that Obama was the Antichrist. And, and so – and God does relent. He does change his mind. He does respond to the prayers of the saints. I do believe with all of my heart that he calls all audibles because it's all over the Bible. If you use New King James, uh, the, the Amplified, and you look for the word relent, especially the New King James is the best one because for this particular search, word study, relent, R-E-L-E-N-T. All right, praise God. And then you will get your arms around how dynamic the kingdom actually is. Praise his holy name. But I, there's too much information. There's too much correlation, cross-pollination. There's too many confirmations, too many prophecies, dreams, and visions. Yes, no. You, you know, I, 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 you know when, for example, when Glenda Jackson prophesied that Obama, you know, it was, you know uh, and, and martial law was going to come upon the United States and really bad things were going to happen, the Lord also spoke to her if the, if the church is not turned into a house of prayer. But I've had people say, well, the church hasn't been turned into a house of prayer. And I'm like, like, dude, how do you know? How in the world do you know? You have no idea. None of us know. God counts. God is the one. Our Father is the one who hears the prayers of the saints. We don't know. I'm not saying, and how do you know that even if the church that these people are going to is apostate and preaching wrongful things, how do you know that the people's hearts that are in the congregation aren't praying with good hearts and God isn't listening to them? You don't know those things. Only our Father knows these things. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So we need to sit back. We need to be patient. We need to keep our eyes on the things that are happening around the world and be aware that all these things underscore the fact that we are indeed in these seasons. I believe that there is going to be an event. I believe that the things that Rachel Baxter was shown are absolutely on target. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We have confirmations. We have confirmations galore, and when we have confirmations galore, look, if something that somebody prophesies stands out on its own, then you got a warning. Actually, nowadays, I would say that within the last eh, maybe two years, anything that's come out there, even if it is confirmed, you got to be really careful because if it's not getting confirmed by something that was like maybe 15 to 20 years ago or 10 years ago, well – you might want to hold it up. You might want to put it on your D shelf and say, well, I'll stick it up on the shelf as a maybe. All right. Praise God. Uh, because we don't know. 
But but you definitely don't want to embrace it and go, oh, I'm going to sell the farm and move off to Montana uh, so I can, you know, I'm going to I'm going to get a house, uh, you know, just down the road from the Tetons, uh, you know, and hang out with water buffalo. <laughs> you know, no. And you know how many people have done that over the years? We've brought people on this radio show whose whose testimonies were that, well, the Lord told me uh, that I needed to move off and, and start this and start that and go off and, you know, get and prepare for the days and, you know, and set up this and set up that. Well, maybe the Lord did. I'm not questioning that. But can you imagine what it must feel like for them right now to have all this stuff going on around them, to have all this Trumpy entity weirdness going on, all this deception, all this, you know, it, I mean, it's like, man, I tip my hat, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, to the prophets do, do, that do not participate in the Internet sphere. And if they do, at least let's pray in Jesus' name that they keep it on a very minimal level. And I super duper thank you, Jesus, for the ones who do not participate in the Internet sphere at all. Praise God, because they would be more like the Elijahs. They would be more like the Jeremiahs and the, and the Obadiahs and the Zechariahs and all, all that. Other. This is what we need. We desperately need this. Hallelujah. But right now, the signal to noise ratio is way out of control. As a matter of fact, I wanted to read this for you. Uh, praise Jesus. Uh, uh, and, and then we'll move on really quick because um, I don't want to run out of time. Uh, but um, I wanted to read this to you because there is so much anointed truth in this. And boy, do I empathize. I relate with this so much. And by the way, for anybody out there who is, you know, um, drawn to the world of Facebook, which I'm not, I'm not at all. I use it to, to you know, publish uh, uh, radio shows for the most part. Once in a while, I'll poke my head up and put something that's materially important, perhaps, uh, you know, or I'll say, you know, something that the Lord placed upon my heart. But it is rare. I mean, I, if I do like four posts uh, that are outside of the radio shows a year, that's a lot. If I pop up and say something as a comment, uh, you know, to somebody else's comment, maybe a half a dozen times in a year, believe me. That's a lot. And anybody, you know, I've, I've even had people, you know, when I look in the comments, you know, occasionally I'll, I'll look in the comments. Sometimes I just disappear and, you know, I just kind of exit stage left. You know, I do the whole snaggle puss thing and I'm like, out of here. And, uh, uh, you know, because I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. I've had enough chainsaws stuck in my back. I don't want to hear it. I don't need to hear the reviling. I don't need any more ice picks in my eye. I don't need any more YouTube videos dedicated to disparaging me <laughs> and websites dedicated to disparaging me. Praise God. I mean, I guess I should be happy because it probably means I'm getting another wing bill on my mansion. Because that's pretty much what the Bible says. I mean, you know, without being that specific, praise Jesus. All right, but at the same time, it still hurts. There's life and death and power of the tongue. People are out there saying all kinds of things they shouldn't ought to be saying. So anyway, I wanted to share this with you. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, because um, this is so unusual, uh, at least in, 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 and it was called to my attention, most likely by the Lord and the Holy Spirit, because I don't really hang out there. I don't look for information. The information either finds its way to me supernaturally, or I don't ever know about it. And quite frankly, I'm very pleased to not know about it because ignorance is bliss, and I want to be the happiest guy down the road. All right, praise Jesus, especially when it comes to YouTube or Facebook. All right, thank you, Jesus. All right, but anyway, listen to this. Now, this, I thank you, Jesus. This is from Pastor Aaron Wagner. And for those of you who have been long-term listeners of this radio show, you know that we've done shows together, many of them. Uh, uh, Pastor Aaron Wagner stayed in my house for several days uh, when he was traveling with the Todd White Conference uh, in Orlando. That was also where I believe it was the same place that he also saw Benny Hinn on his knees, bawling his eyes out and repenting for being a prosperity doctrine preacher. See, there's a lot of people out there that are going to have to going to have to face Jesus now because they've been out there disparaging and saying evil things about Benny Hinn. This is why you never, never, never say bad things about people by name because when they repent, you will be held accountable for your words that are not deletable. Oopsie daisy, you, unless you have your own YouTube video and then you can go back and recant it, which you best do, uh, you know, if you have. But I highly recommend that you never, ever, ever ever say anything bad about anybody by name okay you can you can admonish the behavior but you cannot mention their name because they can repent and when they repent now you you have the floodlight of jesus christ shining down on you and i wouldn't want to be standing beside you at the beam of judgment seat mm -mm 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 -mm. <sighs> ah. 
I put some negative. Uh, I was really upset. I'm not even going to get into this story, but um, uh, my sister and I were prayed up and everything, and we went to a restaurant. I'll keep it real short, but we went to a restaurant in York, Pennsylvania, and um, it, the, the waitress, she must have – it's kind of sad when I look back upon it. But she must have um, – even my sister, you know, she brought this up, and I, it hit me like a, you know, I should have – you know, I was like, yeah, you're right. But the waitress was like – when she came to our table, it was like her eyes were like weird, and, uh, you know, and she was like it – was, it was standoffish and negative, and we, we hadn't said a word. We were just sitting at the table. We're looking at our menus, and this woman is just like – you could just see the look in her eyes. It was just very uh, confrontational and pugnacious. It was the strangest thing I had ever experienced. And um, she uh, – my sister asked for more french fries with our, you know, almost $100, you know, with the tip been over a $100 meal. And I was taking her out for her birthday. And um, uh, oh, it just went downhill from there. And this one was like, well, you know, you're going to have to pay for him. And it just got ugly, and it was embarrassing and humiliating. And I went out and I put uh, – you know, I went on like Yelp, and I put a, 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 you know, a little comment out on Yelp. And I said, man, this, this, this restaurant, you, you wouldn't believe what just happened to me at this restaurant. Over a, over a dollar's worth of fries and a hundred dollars worth of seafood. And then, you know what, the Lord placed it upon my heart, just go down and just take it off. And, and I did. I put a comment on Yelp, and I put a comment on Google Maps, you know, which, you know, they have reviews on there. And the Lord placed it upon my heart. I, was, I, I guess I really wasn't that surprised, but he, but, he, but he placed it upon my heart. He says, go take it off. And I did. I went and I took, took down the uh, comment. The comment was 100 percent true. And, I, and we had every reason to be, well, you know, super duper not happy with the way that we were treated. But at the same time, I thought. You know, if this hurts the other people in that restaurant that are working there, that would be bad. See, we have to look at everything with the love of Jesus. And at that moment, I was operating out of the flesh because I was not happy about the French fry incident. And yes, my sister was right. That woman was probably demon-possessed on a level that we could have never even have imagined because her reaction to our table, which certainly had a glory light of the Lord Jesus shining from it, which will irritate any strongman demon inside of any individual and cause them to just spout out and be negative, very, very negative. And unless you have the, you know, the presence and the light of the Lord on you, you may not even recognize it. You'll just be befuddled and go like, what was that all about? All right, praise God. But the Lord told me to take it down. We're going to be judged. You want to be one of those people where God does not remember your sins. For I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Isaiah 43, 25. I want to be one of those people. Blessed is he whom the God, who our Father does not hold their iniquity you know, accountable unto them. I don't know what chapter and verse that is, but that's in multiple places throughout the Bible. Praise God. All right, just do a word study on iniquity. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all over there. But, you know, I, I, I don't want any part of it. What it is about us, I don't know what it is. What kind of demonic DNA that is woven in as the second strand inside of our bodies, even when we you know, are saved. I don't understand what it is about us that makes us feel like we are entitled to disparage and speak negative things upon other people. We're not. We're not. Oh, but I'm supposed to, you know, divulge the wiles of the devil and everything. No, no, no. I do like David Wilkerson did. Admonish the behavior. Do not mention the name of the individual. So anyway, past, uh, getting back to Pastor Ern, I know Pastor Ern pretty well. You don't, you know, the person doesn't live at your house for like three days and everything, and you have these like long conversations. You go to the beach together, have dinner together, and talk, 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 talk. And of course, all the radio shows we've done. Anyway, I want to read this to you. This this was shown to me on Facebook, and, I, and then I got to jump into this other stuff too. Praise God! But listen to this. He says, from January nineteenth, he, he says he he posts this out there, and he says, "Please forgive me." which is an excellent way to start because, you know what, that's, that's humility. He says, I don't want to hurt anyone, but I don't want your prophetic words. I want the word of God, tested through fire, proven by time, and never failing, and never changing precious, the never-changing precious word of God. Let God be the truth, and every, and the, and, and every man be uh, you know, is a liar. Your prophecies have failed over and over because you speak out of a desire to be seen and heard. You give words from your flesh and call it prophecy. I am hungry and in great need of Scripture. Now, if you can stir me up and edify me with the Word of God, I welcome it. But I have seen so many self-proclaimed prophets over and over again speak failed words that never come to pass and prove to be false. 
If you have a word for me, now, he's, now I know what's, what he's going through because I've had this happen time and time and time and time again to me. Oh, the Lord placed it upon my heart that I need to tell you this. And I'm like, uh, no, the Lord didn't place diddly upon your heart, brother and sister. You, you know, that is not how the Lord works. And I am right here to tell you, I felt for Pastor Aaron when I saw this because I knew what he was going through. I've been through it time and time again. It goes on, if you have a word for me, I am not, uh, 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 I am not in a place where I want to hear it. I appreciate so many trying to encourage me and say that this is love. Most people don't even understand what love is. I've been on my knees crying, alligator tears, and on my knees, crying, begging God, begging God for him to pour out his love upon me. And it took years for me to see that change. Tears. He says, and I say this in love, but please learn the Bible. Amen. And use the word of God to encourage and edify. Study to show yourself approved and learn to, be hum- learn to humble yourself and turn away from a desire to be heard. Let God speak. Let the Bible do the talking. It's time we exalt Christ in his word. And I, 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 the Lord showed it to me. I popped up for a second. I was like a meerkat. I'm like a meerkat on the, on the Internet. You know, and I, I, my head popped up out of my little meerkat hole, and I looked to the left, looked to the right, looked to the left, looked to the right, and I popped a little comment up there, and I said, God bless you, Pastor Aaron. Something along that line, I was like, um, I was like you know, the, the world is a very dirty, messy place right now. Just keep on shining the light. Praise God. Because I know what it's like. Been going through for a long, long time. Praise Jesus. Again, they will kick you out of the synagogues. Yes, there will come a time that they kill you and think they have done God a service. John 16, 2. But guess what? You can take the words kill you and you can substitute prophesy about you and think they have done God a service. Sorry. <clears throat> if deep down inside their heart they want to hear themselves, they want to be confirmed by other believers, by other men and women. They're really not serving God. They're serving their flesh. They want to be heard. They want to be patted on the back. They want somebody to come up to them and say, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The Lord showed me the same thing. Somebody who's really serving God really doesn't care if somebody else agrees with them. And that's why I praise you, Jesus, for all of the prophecies, dreams, and visions that we've been blessed to have uh, you know, brought to this program over the years. And many of which were brought to us through people such as Sister Rachel, Rachel Baxter that don't hang out in cliques, don't need any confirmation and pat on the back from another human, praise God, and are seeking the Father. Diana Pulliam's another one. Terry Hill's another one. The list goes on and on. Praise God. We thank you, Jesus, for, for, for this, and we just want to just, – just wanted to share this with you folks because – you can substitute – you can understand that we live in such dangerous and risky and, oh my gosh, people are being hurt. Things are being said, and we all need to keep our heads right now. I'll, I'll, do, the, uh, I'll do the churchianity thing for you. Brothers and sisters, please hear what I'm trying to say. Brothers and sisters, please. <laughs> right? Okay. We need to keep our heads down. Not a week goes by I don't get a, a, you, somebody forwarding me a YouTube video or, a, or Facebook post that says, oh, no, or what do you think of this? And I sometimes, not always, will look and I go, oh, no, another brother or sister has fallen into the rabbit hole of the seducing prophets, seducing spirits problem, the mess that we are in, the signal-to-noise ratio that is out there that is absolutely mind-bending. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But you know what? It underscores the time that we're in right now. Glory to Jesus. Kids, are you ready? All right. Praise Jesus. Let me go ahead and see if I can find. uh, Yeah, here we go. All right, kids. Now, I know you've been waiting a long time. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, here we go. Kids, what's a snowman's favorite food? What's a snowman's favorite food? Ice burgers. <laughs> what do you think, kids? Come on. Wait a minute. Kid, you did, oh, oh, wait a minute. Did I repeat that from the – oh, my gosh, I'm sorry. No wonder you booed. All right, let's try another one. Kids, what did the mama cow tell the baby cow after dinner? It's past your bedtime. Past your bedtime. Get it, kids? What do you think about that one, huh? 
Oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And our mouths were filled with laughter and our voices were singing. Our tongues were singing. Kids, did you hear about the limo driver or went 25 years without a customer? Kids, all that time and nothing to show for it. Show for it? Get it? Kids, come on. We're going to be here. You can go. Oh! oh, that's great. All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, and on that note, let's go ahead and, oh, well, let me take a look. Uh, at the time, I want to see, I want to read this. All right, we're going to, we'll flash from the past, a prophecy. All right, praise God. This here is, once again, a prophecy, a prophetic warning from David Wilkerson. Earth-shattering word as God's judgment is, uh, comes to America. Now, has it started? Gangbusters, do you remember back when uh, the Houston, um, the Houston uh, floods were happening in the last major Houston flooding event with, you know, with the, the hurricane that grazed them or whatever? You remember that? Remember everybody coming out prophesying that that was the beginning of the judgments upon the United States? Well, where are we now? See? So Pastor Aaron Wagner nailed it, didn't he? The, 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 it's not just the pillow prophets that are getting nailed by the seducing spirits. Mm-mm. It's all of them. We're in a per- signal to noise ratio is awful. I mean, it's really, really bad. Now, I'm just going to read this because you know what? When, whenever we can, I want to be able to bring onto this program stuff that we can con- confirm. Confirm that it's not tainted by the messed up signal to noise ratio that is out there right now. That is not tainted by the seducing spirits that, spirits that were prophesied by Stanley Frodgen back in the 60s. All right, and this is David Wilkerson speaking. Quote, I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to send down an urgent message to all on our uh, mailing list and to our friends and to bishops that we have met worldwide. An earth-shattering calamity is about to happen. Now, be careful about the word about because, you know, the word soon and all that. Okay, don't worry. But, you know, but just hang in there. It is going to be so frightening, we are all going to tremble, even the godliest amongst us. For 10 years, I have been warning about a thousand fires coming to New York City. It will engulf the whole megaplex, including New Jersey and Connecticut. Major cities will, across the world will experience riots and blazing fires, such as we uh, saw in Watts, Los Angeles years ago. There will be riots and fires in cities wor- worldwide. There will be looting, including Times Square, New York City. We are, uh, what we are experiencing now is not a recession, not even a depression. We are under God's wrath. Psalm, Psalm uh, 11, it is written, and, in, and it goes, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Verse 3, God is judging the raging sins of America and the nation. He is destroying the secular foundations. The prophet Jeremiah pleaded with the wicked of Israel. God is fashioning a calamity against you and devising a plan against you. Oh, turn back each of you from your evil way and reform your ways and deeds. But they will say, it's hopeless, for we are going to follow our own plans, and each of us will act according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11 through 12. Praise God. So again, uh, and, and he goes on, uh, he, he, you know, uh, Wilkerson goes on and, and says uh, he recommends a 30-day supply of non-perishable f- food, toiletries, and essentials. Uh, you know, and I, I, look, if you can afford it, okay. But also remember that the Lord has also prophesied through very anointed people over many, 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 many years that he's going to be causing miracles to happen in people's lives. So if you cannot afford these things, do not worry. Do not worry. Just worship, praise, be on your knees, be in the secret place of the Most High. Stay there. Praise Him. Worship, 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 worship. Praise, 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 praise. Drawing closer, drawing closer, and there will be miraculous food that appears on your table. You will not have to worry. Do not ever worry. Trust. I pray every single day now for God to pour out a golden bowl or vial of trust into my heart. Overflow. Overflow it. Increase it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he goes on. There's no need to run and hide. This is God's righteous work. And he talks about how God's loving kindness over, you know, those of us who are who love him is going to deliver his people through these difficult times. And amen to that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And on that note, let's go ahead and move in to the news. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It's not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, 
Headline, Libya war costing $77 million in oil revenue per day. And don't think for a second that the uh, evil ones are not counting every dime of it. And, of course, it's building frustration leading up into World War III. As Robert Vandrius Mitchell puts it, it, puts the, it pits the Illuminati factions across the world at odds with one another, which, of course, is what, exactly what Lucifer would want because it foments and drives forward World War III. Okay, but – until that which restrains is taken out of the way, or he that restrains, depending on your translation. Praise God. All right, Second Thessalonians 2. All right, but again, watch out for these things, because this isn't just happening in Libya. This is also happening in Venezuela. It's happening in different parts of the world. There are pipelines that are, that are, that are under halt right now. They cannot be built, and Russia is none too pleased. Uh, the sanctions that Trump has put into place is driving the, the world economy into World War III, but most people are unaware of it because they're, they're, they're too busy uh, singing praises to Trump and worship, worshiping like, like Jesus. It is unbelievable. All right. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God for this news. All right. This is from Ynet News out of Israel. Macron out of France says he is utterly inflexible over Iran's nuclear ambitions and a press conference in Jerusalem as part of the World Holocaust Forum events. The French leader added that uh, anti-Semitism must be fought by any means and warned that it is spreading over Europe like a disease. And you know what? He's right. We are going gangbusters into the times which David Wilkerson, uh, Dimitri Dudeman, A.A. A. Allen, all of, of God's generals uh, and, and, and you know many, many more had prophesied about. And these are the ones that we need to hold up in reverence and put on our A-list and be the most familiar with. Because the rest of it can supplement it, but you've got to have a foundation. And just as Pastor Aaron Wagner said, which he was right, if you don't know your Bible, which most people don't, especially those out on YouTube that are out there saying things like, I'm not even going to get into it, that, that are like listing me side by side with David Wilkerson as one of the top ten you know, false prophets out there right now. I mean, please, I mean, for crying out loud, I don't even prophesy. I never had to give the prophecy. As a matter of fact, I prayed in Jesus' name to the Father never to let me have to give the prophecy. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want to be in the signal-to-noise ratio. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Here we go. State attorney generals warning to the Senate calls impeachment a dangerous precedent. The stuff that is going on over this whole he 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 moon moon walking, uh, you know, choreographed a uh, bunch of baloney, uh, you know, that's happening all over uh, the uh, controlled media sources here in Babylon the Great. Uh, you know, is it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's all I can do. I, I mean, it's, 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 it's everywhere. It's like turn away, run away, put put your hands over your ears, right, kids? Put your hands over your ears. Amen. You're good. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I was on a totally different track. Next up, smoke and violence in Beirut as Lebanese protests continue after new government is formed. Again, right now, there are, there are civil unrest, riots, mayhem, yellow vest protests in France. There's protests and floods and cataclysmic events, a Kornikova virus, which is moved from – we're going to hit those. I mean, it is just unbelievable. The things that are happening on a global level, but you've got to have your eyes on the globe. You've got to be looking. You've got to understand that the word of God, the Olivet Discourse, was a warning unto the world. It was not a warning to the United States. As a matter of fact, the United States and Israel are the two most judged uh, countries in the entire Entire world in the Holy Bible, but most people don't even know their Bible, and they're out there running churches, and they're out there prophesying in very big numbers in front of people, and they're like going, oh, goody, goody, gumdrops, goody, goody, gumdrops, everything is fine, everything is fine, everything is fine. No, it's not. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Uh, this is from the sun. Listen to this. C killer bug. Corner, uh, coronavirus. Did I say Cornicova? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, so, anyway, coronavirus death toll doubles to 17 as more than 470 cases of mutating. Mutating bugs are confirmed. It goes on. Pandemic fears grow as China virus tolls rise to nine. The headlines go on. Listen to this. AP Newswire virus prompts temperature checks at, and extra cleanings at the airports. I got to fly to Phoenix, uh, uh, 27th, 28th, and 29th, and 30th. I'm going to be there. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, uh, going into parts unknown. No, I've been there before. But at least, thank you, Jesus, it's in the wintertime now. Uh, and I won't be, like, baking like, a, like an ant underneath a giant magnifying glass. How anybody can live out there, I do not understand these things. I have been out there in the summertime and actually had my clients when we were going to lunch say, folks, we're going to have to run really quick. Well, not run, but we're going to have to walk really, really fast because we're going three blocks and, you know, it's extremely hot. And, well, you know, the fact of the matter is it's painful. <laughs> you know, it's like unbelievable. But at least it's wintertime now, so it might not be so bad. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, let's keep on going through the news. Glory be to God. 
Chinese mystery disease update number five, world in panic, 440 confirmed cases equal to over 20,000 unconfirmed cases. According to Professor Neil Ferguson's table, MRC Global, uh, Center for Global Infectious Disease Analysis. So some of those who are studying this Chinese permutating strange killer virus, folks, I do, I do recommend uh, colloidal silver. I'm not selling it. I'm just saying that the Lord placed it upon my heart to take a tablespoon of colloidal silver uh, one time because I felt a cold coming on, and I prayed to him. I sought him, I sought him fervently, and I wasn't thinking about nothing. I was, I was just, Lord, I don't have time for this. I could feel it coming on, and then I, I heard it, like colloidal silver in my heart, and I don't even take that stuff, but I happen to have some in my shelves just from way, way long time ago. And I went over and I was like, and I pulled it out and it had like a Holy Spirit dove. I forgot I had it, had like a Holy Spirit dove on the label. So I took one little tablespoon that day. Next day, I took another one little tablespoon. Next day, I took another one little tablespoon and gone. And every time I've had a scratch in my throat or anything, take one little tablespoon that morning. Symptoms by mid-afternoon are gone. Take another one, precautionary, the next day, the next day, the next, about four days, I'll take one tablespoon. That's all I take. And every, every time, wiped out, gone, completely gone. I've bought it for people many, many times. Uh, I just recommended it to my niece because they're getting pummeled by this flu virus that's going around. And it isn't even this creepy, weird one from China. All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Next up, CBS Evening News. USS Abraham Lincoln returns home after 10 months at sea, and it has, yes, gone back over to the West Coast, exactly as I predicted to hallelujah. I do think that we need to pray for all of those people. All right, hallelujah. We don't want anything bad to happen to any of these people. No matter what, we should always be praying that God will relent. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that people's souls will be saved. Uh, because you know what? That's what we are commissioned to do through the love of Jesus. Next up, Iranian lawmaker announces $3 million cash reward for whoever kills Donald Trump. I kid you not. By the way, this was posted on Fox News. So this is no longer lurking around the Twitter feeds. This has actually hit the mainstream Babylon the Great me media stuff. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Oh, another headline. Listen to this. Three missiles land in the green zone again uh, in Baghdad, close to the United States e embassy, according to Iraqi security sources. Another headline. Me uh, Mexican uh, National Guard fires gas to stop migrants at Guatemalan border. Situation down there has not let up. Another headline. Denver Post columnists fired after arguing that there are two sexes, men and, men, men and women. So they fired them. <laughs> L G B T how does it go like A B C D E F G L G B T Q L M N O P Wrong <laughs> Praise Jesus <laughs> It's like oh my god somebody Hey Wake up Oh thank you Jesus Oh what was that thing that Bill Murray said? Hey human sacrifice dogs and cats living together Mass is Terry Mass hysteria. Yeah. But you know what? My favorite all time sound effect for the days that we are in right now, although you gotta like amplify it like times a hundred, is this one. Same as it ever was. 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 Are you serious? Are you serious? Serious. Yes, we are serious, uh, Pastor Paul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And on that note, let's see if we have uh, Sister Rachel Baxter on the line. Glory be to God. Let me uh, click my way over here and take a look at the call doc. And guess what? Praise Jesus. We do. Here we go. Sister Rachel, are you there? I am here. Praise God. You know, with, with all this, you know, we, we, you know, with the, the Heidi Baker vision from like way, way back, which by the way, I mentioned my sister, who's kind of like a doubting Thomas when it comes to how end times, end timesy we are right now, <clears throat> you know, yeah. and then I brought up the Heidi Baker vision about the suddenlies and that we wouldn't see it coming, whatever it is. Okay. You know, and then she was like, oh Yeah. So that kind of got her on the right page, which was awesome. 
And I think, you know, like the stuff that the Lord showed you is, well, really, really important. Because with the Suleimani killing, the new guy that they put in charge to, you know, succeed him, the overt threats, you know, overt threats from Iran, the uh, claims of the potential for a false flag event, all this stuff. I mean, it's all over the, you know, if you, if you knew where to look. Mm-hmm. We don't know. You know, but what we what we can surmise with a reasonable amount of assurance and likelihood is that we're probably pretty close to something like what the Lord showed you happening that would jettison us into inevitable and biblical World War III. And that's why I thought it would be a blessing to have you come back on and share that and whatever else the Lord leads you to share with the listeners tonight, because I think we need to keep these things in the forefront of our hearts and our prayers for the lost, especially in the impacted areas, which I don't think we definitely know where they will all be. But anyway, on that note, um, I just wanted to go ahead and turn the mic over to you, let you go ahead and speak to the people. I think this is vitally important. And it should fuel the fires of our hearts to pray for the lost and to also draw in closer to the Lord for the days are definitely upon us. It might be a little while, but they're upon us. Praise God. And on that note, Amen. take your mic. Praise, praise God for you joining us tonight. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, John. I, you know, as I just clicked in, I was listening to some of the things you were talking about. And first of all, I just appreciate your joy. I think that we're in a, in a time where joy is so critical that we've got to find joy. We've got to be able to laugh. We've got to be able to, to talk about these things and yet not grow disheartened Um, because it's very easy if we just are focusing on just, I mean, the absolute chaos and confusion that abounds, you know, that we're just, we are bombarded by our children are bombarded by, so anyway, you, you made me laugh, and I appreciated that. So I, I'm just really honored to be able to be back on your program. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to speak and share the things the Lord has been showing me and what he's placed on my heart. Um, you know, uh, your, your program reached out a month or two ago, and we scheduled this. And I've, I've been in prayer, you know, just asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what is it you're going to want to uh, want me to speak about. And in the past, when I've been on, um, typically the Lord would, you know, give me some kind of a dream or he would just speak to me very profoundly. And, and I would just have a very clear sense of what he wanted to talk about, like what, what this opportunity was about in terms of what he's been showing me. And, and this time I, as I was praying, I really, I felt the Lord just put on my heart a message that I feel like will be very encouraging to the people listening here, to everyone who's listening, and at the same time sobering, uh, because you're right that time is short. Um, and just to really briefly give some background, if people don't know, you know, my, my story a little bit is that uh, I, I grew up in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, very conservative. I grew, you know, baptized, confirmed, married in the church. Um, but I didn't know what it was really like to have a personal relationship with Jesus. I didn't know that he's a real man that loves me and wants to talk and, you know, that his father is right there and present and through Holy Spirit that we have access. I didn't know that. And so it's been just over six years uh, since I began to hear the Lord's voice. And um, really, I guess I describe it as becoming spirit filled up until that point. I, I went to church. And I did what good Christians do, but my life, I was, I was dead. I was dead. There's no other way to describe it. I just was living in this world, uh, just like everybody else doing what I, doing the best I could do, whatever that looked like. And uh, to be honest, you know, because of all the brokenness in my life leading up to that point, you know, we all just have hurt some things. I mean, I was striving under my own performance, under my own strength to build my own kingdom on this earth. And I was very successful as an engineer and having my master's and, and the Lord had given me a lot of favor, which I didn't even give him credit for um, putting me in situations where very powerful people would listen to me, you know? And um, the, the problem with all of that though, with building your own kingdom on this earth is it doesn't bring you joy and it doesn't bring you fulfillment. And honestly, I was exhausted 
And so the Lord led me to a ministry called One Whole Heart. And I received inner healing, began to hear the Lord's voice. And I was truly set free to be who God made me to be. And so my journey the last six years has been really profound. I, I'm sure I, I, everybody has their own story. And, but for me, uh, I just had a lot of supernatural, crazy things happen. And um, I, I didn't have anybody really to bounce it off of. And I thought, I thought, well, this must be normal. <laughs> this, and I, I believe it is normal when you begin to hear God's voice and having dreams and visions and tapping into the reality that we're not just a body. We are a spirit in a body with a mind. And that reality can be so different than what we do as we go about our lives, um, just believing that this is all there is. Because the truth is that there's so much more. And so God began to open my eyes and teach me about those things. So I'm excited to be on with you tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about some of those supernatural things. And also, I feel like, again, this message of encouragement, we're going to be talking about the kingdom of God. Because that is what is, is happening right now. We are seeing, even though this broken world is all around us, God is absolutely building his kingdom on this earth right now within us and through us. And I want to talk about the, the, the reality of that, the proof of that, uh, because we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We can't, we can't have our eyes on what the enemy's doing. Uh, I had my eyes on that for way too long, you know, sifting out all the conspiracies and all those things that actually are, are very true and very real. The, the, the plans of the enemy against us and against our souls, his, Satan's plan is absolutely to take every single one of God's children that he can to hell, period. That's his entire motive. And God's plan is one of redemption. And so um, I want to share with you that uh, recently, something that happened recently that I I felt like the Lord would have me share was that I had this dream, and it was just a very simple dream, where I saw the Lord place a pearl in my mouth, like this pretty big beautiful pearl in my mouth. And in the dream, I felt the pearl. The Lord, I knew the Lord had placed it there and I opened my mouth and I saw it. And that was the dream and it was over. And I woke in the morning and I, you know, it was just like, huh. And it was the first thought I had. And, um, and so I'm like, well, that's really interesting, Lord. What, what could that mean? You know? So I sought him for it and I kind of thought, thought it out. And what I learned is that uh, a pearl in order for a pearl to form in a, like a, in a muscle, um, what happens is that some kind of an irritant gets inside of that, uh, gets inside of the, the muscle or the, the clam or whatever, gets inside there. And this, this irritant, in order for the muscle to protect itself, it starts to coat the irritant. And it takes time for that coating to happen. And what happens is when it's done well, it becomes a pearl. For um, cultured pearls you may have heard of that before that's actually where where farmers raise mussels and what they do is in order for a pearl to form first a mussel has to be mature enough and so it takes about three years for a mussel to be mature enough and then what they do is they surgically implant some kind of an irritant and then the mussel begins to coat and coat and coat and coat around the irritant until it takes another three years on average so three years to maturity plus three more years before a pearl can be um, harvested from the muscle. So the Lord was just showing me that. And in my own walk with the Lord, it was the fall of 2013 when I first began to hear the Lord's voice and began to have these, um, just uh, began to, you know, grow in my relationship with him. And he began to show me things and speak to my heart and, and things like that. So, and he just showed me how from from the fall of 2013 to 2016, kind of this process that was going on in me. And then from 2016 till the end of 2019, this process that was going on in me. And so, I don't know, I want to speak that out to other people too, that that God can do things awfully quickly, right? He can just absolutely transform us. And, and then sometimes it takes decades <laughs> and decades and decades for transformation to take place. And in the case of this, what he was showing me, you know, this three-year period and this three-year period, a total of six years for me, he just was showing me and encouraging me that I'm at a place where the pearl represents maturity in me and what he's given to me to, to carry and the message that he's given me to, to bring forward. And also that the pearl, it represented the gospel. And there's a scripture that from Matthew 13, 44 and 45, it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he found one pearl of great price, 
went and sold all that he had and bought it. And so the question I felt like the Lord was asking me, and I'm asking you tonight as you're listening, is are you willing to sell all that you have for the pearl of great price? And am I willing to give up all that I have, no matter what that cost is, no matter whatever the dreams and and, uh, the kingdoms I was building for myself again that I said, no matter what I'm building, am I willing to just to give that all up because I trust that what the Lord has for me, the plans that he has for me are so much greater than what I could have for myself. So um, over the last six years of all these supernatural occurrences, I have seen healings. I have seen absolutely amazing things happen. Uh, Things like a man, a box disappeared from a man's head and he was healed from hydroencephalitis uh, right in front of me. I've seen a broken wrist. I felt it, you know, heard it crack, all of it. A broken wrist completely healed. Hips healed, legs grown out. I mean, I just, I've seen so much. I've seen God move and it's always only in the name of Jesus or Yeshua. That's the only name. It is the only name that brings healing. And what what happened, you know, in the early church that we read about in Acts chapter 2 and on, what we read about there, um, what I firmly believe is what we saw there, what the Lord showed us there in that scripture, he is again moving like that. And not that he stopped. I don't believe God ever stopped. But I believe there's a tremendous movement, a tremendous movement of God that is upon us. And we're just beginning to see the first fruits of that movement. But that will only accelerate, will only gain speed in the the days and the months and the years ahead. And so for me, a few of the things, just the kind of, the kind of like the things we don't have a paradigm for. Um, within this six-year period, um, I've had... This one, this one particular angel that I call the angel of death, who he's not, he's not scary and he's absolutely God's angel, but his job is death. And the, this angel spoke to me and he said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And it was a very serious message that he spoke. And another time he said to me, he said, you've been called to see that which is coming upon the earth. And I remember when he said it in my spirit, I cried out, I will tell them, I will tell them, I will tell them. I will do it, Lord. And in May of 2015, I had this experience where I had an open vision and saw uh, like a, it was like a trillion tiny scrolls uh, in, in the space in front of me, and they all formed a large scroll. And I heard the Lord speak very clearly, the scroll is being opened. And I, I didn't know it at the time, and the Lord just showed it to me over a period of time, that it's not some lesser scroll. The Bible is full of all kinds of scrolls, and it, it is a scroll, right? Um, But he was talking about the scroll that only the lamb could open, only Jesus could open, the scroll of Revelation. And so that was in May of 2015 where he said the scroll is being opened. So to me, that was a sign and a signal for me to recognize we are living in the time of the book of Revelation, that it is playing out before our eyes, some of the events that you just talked about with what's going on in Iran and Turkey and Russia. We can see these prophetic uh, pictures coming together in, in just in, in incredible ways, you know, ways that it can only be the Lord. And so we can know. And then in uh, August 2016, I had another experience with, with the Lord where I heard the audible voice of God, which this is, that's very, very rare for me. But I heard him say, it is time. It is time to lead. It is time to lead your brothers, Manasseh, back to me. And at the time I heard that, first of all, I want you to know I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm just, you know, a girl who grew up in Iowa. Uh, I am a mother. I'm a wife, uh, business person. I just, I'm just, I'm nobody apart from the Lord. And each of us have a destiny. And I still am, and I'm unraveling that, you know, what does it mean to lead other people back to the Lord? But he said it is time. And so it, he said it three times. It is time, it is time, it is time. So I can know that we are in a significant time. There, there are times where I, There's things that happen, and I go, I even say to myself, well, Lord, maybe we're going to have, you know, maybe all this isn't upon us the way that it has felt like. Maybe we have decades, you know, maybe. And then I remember things that that God has spoken to me, and I know that I I can't ever pretend that they didn't happen. And I can know that I know that it is time. And it's time for all of us to be leading the people around us back to the Lord. And 
I'm not going to go into it tonight, but the, but Manasseh has significance as Manasseh is one of the sons of Joseph, the brother of Ephraim and us as Americans in our place uh, as Israelites. But I'm not going to go into that specifically, but just, I wanted to share that with you that it is time. And, and John, what you're doing, it's critical. And the Lord, he's got to move to supernaturally give his people a voice to increase the audiences to, you know, just like your family member, I have family members all around me that are just going about their lives and they just don't know what I know. They haven't yet caught that in their heart or opened themselves up to believe the truth that we are living. We are that last generation before the Lord returns. And so as the Lord had said to me, tell them what is coming, this angel of death that said, tell them what is coming. And I said, I will, I will, Lord. Something the Lord has convicted me of is, um, even though, you know, I've done, I've got a website where I, I post prophetic messages and I, I've got a, a WordPress blog, you know, where I post things and I share things on Z3 News as God leads. And um, I've written, I've even written a book. Um, the Lord led me to write a book actually two years ago and I just had it published and it's called um, Lifted Up My Wholehearted Testimony. And so I'm not trying to plug my book, but um, the the thing about the book is what I, what I really felt like the Lord wanted me to do was just to share my story that I'm just like you. I'm just like you listening. I was lost and now I'm found and I know who I am and no one, not the Satan or anyone else can ever take that from me, but God had to do a work in me. He had to bring healing into my heart and he had to speak truth into my heart. I had to be, I had to of course read the word of God, which is the only truth we can stand upon, but there's also a place for hearing the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. We have to be able to hear his voice. And so every single person listening, if you are not yet hearing the voice of God, it's critical in this hour. You can read the, the word of God and he can, it can actually come alive and he can speak to you through that. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. He can use people to speak into you, speak truth into you prophetically. Um, but God himself is speaking. He is speaking to his children. He wants us to hear him. And so uh, a, a great resource that I found is a guy named Mark Berkler, and he has wonderful uh, media out there that you can purchase or download or YouTube or whatever, Mark Berkler, Hearing the Voice of God. And that's just one of the resources in our ministry that we direct people to because it can be, it can be something you learn. You know, absolutely it's about Holy Spirit doing a work in you, but you can learn to do it. So anyway, I'm just wanting to share with you some of the things that have been important to me on my journey. And so – in amongst that, I've done a lot of writing, but what I haven't done a lot of is speaking. And I told the Lord that I would tell people what is coming. And so thank you again for this opportunity to speak tonight. Um, so to go back to this, this pearl dream, about a week after I had the dream of the pearl, my son, uh, Boston, who's nine years old, he came to me one morning and he was really excited. And he's like, I have to tell you about my dream because God told me to tell you. And I said, well, I can't wait to hear, you know, and because it's, it's, it's common for the Lord to speak to my children. It's common. God's speaking to kids and oftentimes they hear better than us, you know? <laughs> and so too, we all see in part. And so even our kids can show us a piece of something we're missing. And so Boston had been given this dream. And in the dream, he said that he was standing next to God and Satan was standing in front of God and God opened his mouth and began to speak and it was like this wind came out of God's mouth. And he said, Mom, the wind blew, blew the Satan, the devil, back like a block. It blew him back so far. <laughs> and, you know, a little boy's version of this. And he said it was like so powerful. And, he, and, I, and then he said, Mom, God said to me, he looked over at me and he said, Boston, we defeat the devil when we speak truth. And so when you speak truth, you defeat the devil. And uh, Boston said to me, well, God told me to tell you. And he told me that my dream's a part of your dream, mom. And it didn't come to me right away. And then later on the day I was cleaning the house or something. And uh, it, that the, the pearl dream popped in my mind. And the Lord said, yes, like Boston's dream of when you speak truth, you defeat the devil. That pearl that the Lord had placed in my mouth, the gospel, the truth. That is how we defeat the devil. So we're going to do that tonight. We're going to defeat the devil by speaking truth. 
And so my focus tonight in encouraging you will be on the kingdom of God, the things the Lord's shown me. I want to read to you some of the words the Lord has spoken to me directly about his kingdom coming and what that looks like and your part in it, the preparation that is so critical. Um, in Matthew 3, 2, Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's how he started his ministry. First, repent, because he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Matthew 6, 33, we, we read that Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And I can tell you in my walk, the season that I'm in and the, the community that I'm in, in Omaha, Nebraska, the people that are that I that we choose to spend time together in fellowship and seek the Lord together, this message of righteousness is so important and it's the Lord is it's like he's screaming it to be righteous. What does that look like to be righteous, to turn away from everything that is unholy and seek only the things that are of the Lord? So, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What things? Uh, tremendous things. Tremendous things, not just salvation, which we will receive on the other side, eternal life, but what God has for us on this earth, now, today, at this time, all these things. There's so much that he wants to add to us. So, if you think about that message, the message of repenting for the kingdom of God is at hand, in order for us to enter into something, to enter into something new, we first have to come out of something. So the, the biblical example of that, a couple examples, Jacob's 11 sons, they had to leave their land to go to Joseph in Egypt in order to be saved of the famine. They had to leave somewhere to go somewhere else. The Israelites, we all know that, right? The Israelites had to leave Egypt where they had been for 400 years to go to follow the Lord into another land. Now, because of their disobedience, they had to wander for 40 years. We can only pray that that won't be our our destiny to have to pray, to have to, excuse me, to have to wander for 40 years before we're allowed to to cross over into the promised land like Joshua led the people to do. So, um, recently I heard, I, I hadn't, hadn't known this before, so I can't remember the resource that, that spoke this, but the word Hebrew, right? We know that Abraham was considered the first Hebrew. He was a Hebrew. Well, what is Hebaru? That, what does that word mean? It means to cross over. And Abraham was the first to cross over the Euphrates. And so why all that is important is the Lord is calling us to cross over from the kingdom of this world into his kingdom, which is being built within us even now. So a few other scriptures I'm going to read to kind of set this up, and that while I, then I share some of the prophetic that I've received. So in Luke 17, 20 to 21, we read, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees, Jesus, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and he said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. It is within us. It is within you. If you're listening tonight, the kingdom of God, and it could be there just in tiny, tiny mustard seed, right? It could be just a seed planted within you that God desires to grow. Uh, if we if we go on in Luke, in Luke 18, 15 to 17, we read, then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And so we need to be like little children. And I feel like there's a place in us of that, when I mentioned when we first started talking about this place of joy, um, the Lord had given me a promise several years ago, and I haven't, I haven't yet come into the fullness of this promise, but it's that I will have joy in all circumstances. If you're ever, if you ever spend time around little children and especially little, little children in play, there's so much joy and they just receive things so openly. And I feel like there's a restoration of that, that childlike faith that God wants to, to impart to us the joy that children 
have so naturally that he wants to give back to us. That place of believing, right, the faith of a mustard seed. We have to just believe in order for God to move and see him work. And so anyway, I love those scriptures talking about the kingdom of God. And I pray that over myself and I pray that over you that we would receive the kingdom of God just like a little child. And then um, lastly, uh, several years ago again, kind of in this middle of this six-year period for me, the Lord did this really special thing, you know, where the scripture just comes alive. And I think I talked about this in the last time I was on, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but just to show you, you know, again, a confirmation of what we're, of the times we're living in and how this all fits together. How can we know that God's kingdom is being built here? You know, why, why would his kingdom come? You know, I guess I'd always thought as a, as a Christian, well, you know, eventually things are going to unwind here and it's going to get really bad, the tribulation. And then Jesus is going to come and then we're going to, you know, then it's going to be good. Then we're going to go, then he's going to have his kingdom. Right. But really what God's word says, and this is what he showed me in Daniel two, Daniel two is all about the Nebuchadnezzar and the statue and the, the bronze and the iron and the clay and all of that. Okay. So that's the context. I think hopefully everybody knows that, but read Daniel two, if you want some context, but there's in, in Daniel two, it says Daniel two forty four it says very clearly and in the days of these kings, okay, and in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So in the days of these kings, and I looked at it in, in you know, the, the Greek and the using my e-sword tool and, and looking to see the original uh, text in the days it meant it meant in just like just as it says in the days not after those days but in the days so we can be sure you know Jesus he began that work he came he conquered death he rose again he sits at the right hand of God um, the gospel of who he is and not just that Jesus came to die for us but that who we are in him we are restored priesthood we are meant to be to be kings and priests on this earth for the Lord, that is his kingdom. And we're living in a time when we're going to see this kingdom grow and grow and grow, and it will break in pieces and destroy all the other kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So it's not a before and after. It's a beginning now, and it will, be go, it will go all the way through until the end of the book of Revelation where we see the old earth and the old heaven pass away and the new earth and new heaven come after Satan is finally destroyed. So just another confirmation of this in my in my my walk and what the Lord did through another one of my sons, Xander, when Xander was eight or nine years old, this was a, a number of years ago, four or five years ago, um, Xander was in the bathroom washing his hands and he came out and I was working in the office and he said to me, mom, mom, this, I had this leaf on my head. And I'm like, what? And he said, well, well I had this leaf on my head, but I went to like wash it off or rub it off my forehead and it fell, it started to fall off my head, but then it disappeared. And I said, well, well, that's really strange. You know, what do you think that was? And he said, well, I think God's showing me something. And I said, okay. So we went online and I just put in leaf and images and looked at all these pictures of leaves. And right away, as we scrolled down, he picked out the fig leaf. He's like, it was that one, mom, the fig leaf. So we know the scripture that talks about that. Now learn this parable from the fig tree, from Matthew 24, 32 to 34. When its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. And I absolutely believe that to be the case. And for me personally, I believe the Lord has shown me that I will be on this earth and I will see, I will see those things that are coming upon the earth and I will see Jesus return in the clouds. So that's what I believe. That's what the Lord's shown me. My destiny may not be the same as everyone else's destiny, but we by no means this generation will pass away before we see these things. So I think hopefully that blesses others to hear that. These are all the ways we can know, in addition to everything, John, that you're speaking about that's going on in the world today, the mess that is everywhere. Because 
Satan, he is the God of this world, the little G God of this world. But his kingdom is going to be crushed by the kingdom of God, which is being built even now within us and through us. All right, so I'm going to transition. And, John, just just make sure you give me a little um, time check. I don't want to go too long, okay? So when we have maybe five or so minutes left, please jump, feel free to jump in, okay? In case I go too yeah, long, no I want to make okay. sure that I summarize, okay? <laughs> okay, so, so great. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead. No, I, I you know, it's just, uh, no, I said great, absolutely. I'll, I'll definitely oh, okay. jump in around 5-2 and just say, you know, and, and let you know. Praise God. Okay. I think that would be great. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, thanks so much, John. Okay, so this is a word I want to read. I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, just partial. I'm going to really try to use our time and, and, and pull out for you the things that I think are really significant. But um, so here's a word from the Lord that I received. The Lord said, but for my people, the mighty army, wait for the many precious surprises I have for you. You are far from powerless. My creativity is second to none. You will be even delighted by the ways that I move, by the powers you have at your disposal for great victory in every battle. Have I not shown you that in me you are not limited by space and time and dimension? Have I not shown you that the words you speak will carry such power as to strike fear into the heart of every man who does not worship at my feet? Have I not shown you that my banner is one that covers all? Darkness has come upon this earth and it will get darker day by day. The lost will wander about in confusion. But my children will walk upright and straight as I light their every step. My light comes forth from the kingdom that I've set inside of you. You shall manifest it to such a degree that my full kingdom in all its glory has nothing left to do but be released as the old passes away and the new Jerusalem shines forth. It will be the most beautiful thing any eye has seen. But before it comes, death and destruction and peril must be felt on this earth and in this nation. Every falsehood that has been accepted must be revealed. Every lie Satan has conveyed throughout the ages must be shown as false. Until every heart, until every heart left on this earth knows the truth in their heart, that I am their God and that I am the only God and that they are my creation put on this earth for relationship with me. And so this was in July of 2015. And I just, my, my commentary on that is, uh, that you know, it's pretty early in my journey here. It's coming up on five years, but since that time, how, you know, how many lies have come into into the light? I mean, we have seen so much um, of the just the perversion of every of of everything of every you know sect of our society from just economic the greed and and all of that and the scheming and the sexual perversion and the uh, the intimidation and the use of power. Anyway, I could go on and on. And those are some of the, those are just headlines every single day. And so God is doing what he said he would do, that every lie would come into, into the light and be made known. And so this was the encouragement he gave. Preparing for the days ahead, he said to me, my bride must ready herself. She must be so consumed in her love for me that even as everything falls around her, she hardly notices except to share her testimony of her heart for her groom, for what he has done in her life, and for the eternal life that is hers. So how does one ready themselves for the coming wedding feast? I call every child to humble himself and lay down his life so that I may give him a new one. I cry out to each heart that the plans I have for each person are so much greater than any plan that that they have comprised for themselves. One can only imagine from their own circumstances and imagination. They are bound by this earth, but I have no bounds for you. My desire for each of my children is to bless them with every good thing, just as a parent, just as a parent would. My frustration comes when my children are stubborn and insist upon their own way. They leave all of my blessings sitting out in the cold rain when they close their ears to the breath of my spirit. So open your ears, stop and rest so that you may hear my voice. Rest so that I can revive you to give you the energy you will need for the day of preparation at hand. And then I saw a picture of what that that preparation of an actual wedding day would look like. And so the Lord goes on to talk about just purification and walking in holiness and righteousness, laying down our own agendas to be able to follow him, how his word is truth. He calls us into purification. 
And so he says, you are forgiven only as you forgive. How can I look upon you when you hold a blemish in your heart? Every unforgiven hurt is a blemish that gets in the way. I look upon you from your mother's womb and see every detail of your life and every choice that brings you closer or further from me. Yet you picture this void to exist. This chasm is a lie, and I desire every heart to know the truth, the only truth that I am in you and you are in me, and that there is no separation except through thought. Do not let thoughts get in the way. Do not allow flesh to get in the way. My bride is pure and holy. She has been washed white as snow in the blood of the Lamb. She is humble and ready to serve me. Her heart is open and without blemish. She is the picture of radiance as her beauty shines forth in the forgiveness she extends to anyone. Truth is the only thing on her lips as she speaks forth with grace and kindness. This is the time when the sheep are separated from the goats. Which one will you be, my people? Will you walk with me into eternity? Or will you run from me now and beg at my heels later when it is too late? The gates of hell are open wide. Time is so short. And so another word I received at the end of uh, 2015 from the Lord, and he just says, Fear not that which is coming upon the earth. Everything made by man will shake. Everything built on the foundation of my son, the cornerstone, will stand firm. I am doing a work in my children. I am pouring my love out beyond measure. No ear has heard the glorious riches in store for my children who love me. Remember that this is temporal, temporary, but I am eternal. There is nothing that you will face that I have not already triumphed over. And so, you know, even though I've seen some really, really hard things, and I know lots of people have, and you've had um, some wonderful people come on your program and just talk about the things the Lord has shown them. You know, I've had dreams of all kinds of, uh, you know, armaments coming up out of the ground and warheads and explosions and tsunamis and um, just abuse of every kind, just I've, I've, you know, the Lord has allowed me to see some, some really difficult things. And if I keep my eyes on that, if all I can do is see that, I couldn't possibly even wake up and, and you know, get dressed and go about my life. Like the, the world and the reality of the things to come, the reality of the world as we know it, as it comes into light, it's too heavy for us to carry. It's too heavy of a burden. But if we keep our eyes on the Lord, and we trust in what he's doing, and we know that he'll only, he'll give us every single thing we need to be, over, to be able to overcome what the enemy is doing. To know that as you're listening here tonight, I want you to know, for, for anyone listening tonight, for you to know that, that no matter what you're going through, no matter the difficulties that you're facing, he, the Lord is there with you, and he's made a way through it. He's made a way to overcome just as Jesus has overcome. And, and not only just to survive, I used to believe that was the best I could hope for was just to get through this life. But even though we've been chosen to live at this time, which, is, which we know the tribulation, as it's talked about, will be the most difficult time in the history of, of mankind the last 6,000 years. But God, his plans for us are incredible. If we get our eyes on him and we begin to seek him and we truly Truly, not just a moment here or there, not just going to church, but it has to be a place where our heart position every moment of the day is to hear him and to follow him. We can expect incredible things. We can expect to have joy in all circumstances. We can expect to see God move and the enemy to be defeated. That's his heart because he's going to be doing that. In the, the word I read before where he's building his kingdom, in Daniel 2 where it says in the time of those kings, he's doing it now and the, his kingdom is going to crush, crush the rest of the kingdoms of this world. So if we're in any way partnering with the kingdoms of this world, we can expect that we're going to be crushed, right? And so we've got, Jesus said, repent, go away, turn away, cross over, leave that old kingdom completely and fully, come into my kingdom where you will be protected, where I have amazing, wonderful things for you. Uh, in August of 2016, I heard this from Jesus. This was Jesus' voice that spoke to me, not, not audibly, but just as, I, as he spoke and I wrote. He said, see that which is before you, a true path made with upright stones, each formed perfectly to fit one next to another in beauty and in strength, forged in the heat of the fire, black and marred from the heat and the pressure, but made beautiful in my eyes, transformed into my bride. 
the wedding party readies herself with much preparation. The heavens await in bated anticipation of the celebration that is to come, less than a generation to pass. See, look, gaze upon my beauty, and you will see her beauty. She is being transformed into my image. And the reference for that is 2 Corinthians 3.18. An image that reflects the love, the kindness, the goodness that I am. I will accept nothing less. And Jesus says, my spirit is being poured out without measure. John 3 and Acts 2. The greatness of the power that is accessible to this generation has never been seen before and will never again. These things you will do are even greater than the demonstration of power my father gave to me. John 14, 12. Now he gives it to you freely. With his power comes much responsibility. You must not be like the magician who sought after the power, but, but had not the heart of the father. And that's Acts 8. Power comes through love. It comes through the breath of the father in your lungs. The gifts are poured out freely without justification, but his power is not the same. Power comes only to the righteous. Elijah was given and released the father's power from a place of meekness and humbleness. He carries my father's heart and was loyal to no man. The words that came forth from Elijah's lips were my father's words. The fire that fell came forth from the power given to him according to my father's will. This is 1 Kings 18. Seek my father's heart and you may walk in the power that only comes from him. This power cannot be falsely duplicated. All other sorcery will fail against it. And so, you know, for me personally, I mentioned as we began, just seeing the Lord move incredibly through the power of the name Jesus Yeshua. He is the only name. All these wonderful things. I've seen the power manifest. And why does God do that? Why? If, if you've never seen healing, you know, I would just encourage you, go online and just see videos. Look at videos of all kinds. And these aren't just the big name people. You know, healing is not taking place by only through, through the Todd Whites, although I thank God for him. I think I personally, he, watching what he did and his boldness increased my own faith. But it's, it's the no names. It's just people every day when I go to the grocery store and someone's hurting and being willing to be bold enough to pray for them. It's that kind of a thing. And that's who we are as a body. That's who God means for us to be. We're meant to be a per- peculiar people. We're not to be a people that blend in and look like everyone else around us. And so in another experience, this messenger angel came to me, and this was in November of 2016. This messenger angel came And then I heard Jesus speak. And this is what I heard the Lord say. Jesus say, do not grow weary. I am here. I love you. Don't strive. Give up and rest. I am here to bring you good news as there is great joy in heaven of what is to come. A release is coming unlike anything that has ever come to the earth in any generation. The latter rain is coming and there will be such a deluge for an extended period of time that God's children will begin to change. A new normal will set in. What once was hard will now be easy. What once brought stress will bring joy. It's like the internal wiring will change in those who have prepared, in those who have laid down their lives to follow me. I am coming. I am coming back to live, and you must proclaim my return. This is big. This is true, and this is the most important news anyone in this generation can hear right now. I am coming, but before I do, there are so many things that must be remade. You know, you know this, as I've spoken of this before. And so I just pray that you'll take this in, you'll take this to your heart, this encouragement that Jesus is giving. What I believe is upon us, here we are in 2020, and, and um, I've purposely really been avoiding other people's prophetic words. I know God is speaking to others, and, and you know, I, you, there's a time to soak it up. For me, I just felt like, you know, Lord, show me what you're doing, and I just, I feel that place of righteousness. I feel that place of discipline, but not performance. Not that we have to try to be something in order for him to love us, but to know that we are something because he loves us. We are, each of us is incredible. Each of us has a purpose and that we grab onto that purpose in him. We can be encouraged. We can be so encouraged. I fully expect what is to come. I fully expect to see revival like we have never seen. And, in, and just as someone who researches, I have researched revival in the past. 
the 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 men and women of God in past generations who have brought revival and you know their story if you've never never you know really looked into or paid attention to revival lists of the past there are there are great lessons to be learned uh in what I've taken away from that there's been different moves of God some moves of God have been based upon that this just deep repentance that comes in the stories of when, you know, God's presence is somewhere and you, you, somebody drives near a town and they can't even pull into the town. They have to get out of their car and they're on their knees because they're so convicted of their sin that they, they can't even enter into his presence until they repent. You know, that, that to me can be a definition of revival. Revival can also be where there's just the power of God is so manifest that he, you know that it's an experience of him and that there's a habitation it's not just a one night where you go into a wonderful meeting and you feel his presence but there's a habitation of the lord i am crying out in my heart i am crying out in the community that i'm a part of is crying out that we wouldn't it wouldn't just be a wonderful manifestation of the lord we'd experience because i believe we get to we get we worship and we praise him we enter into just an incredible beautiful time of worship and we feel his presence and I need that. I need his presence in that way. But beyond that, what we need more of, what we need more than that is we need a habitation where his presence does not leave. And so I just want to briefly, you know, just tell you a story that in um, in that, the, the holidays, which we've just gotten through, <laughs> I'll say it that way, I personally um, don't no longer celebrate, celebrate um, Christmas. Uh, or really New Year's and all that, because I, I my heart is to follow after God's calendar and his feast, and I'm not condemning anyone that does. I saw a family that do, that do and children that love opening presents and all that. We've, we've personally tried to, to we're, we're teaching our children about, you know, God's timing. And so one of the things we do recognize is Hanukkah. But anyway, different story. Um, but what I want to say is over the holidays, I had an opportunity to take a 15-hour drive down to Georgia. <laughs> so um, one of my best friends, Krista, got in touch with me and about a week before just said, hey, God's put this on my heart to go down to Georgia. This is what's going on. Can you come? And God opened the door uh, with my family and through my husband that I was able to go. So we just took this this three-day, 15 hours down, 15 hours back. It was kind of crazy. But we went down to Dalton, Georgia, to this town where uh, this incredible manifestation of the Lord is going on. And so if you've never heard of it, you can go online to a website that's called His Name is Flowing Oil, or if you just uh, Google Dalton, Georgia, Bible Oil. And so what, what's happening in is I believe we're seeing one manifestation of God's presence, and it's an ongoing manifestation. So I don't have time to tell you the whole story. There's some really wonderful videos out there that give the background. But basically, a small group of people began to meet together and pray weekly, and they prayed and they prayed, asking to just for the glory of God, no other agenda, but just to worship him. And what began to happen is in the building they were in, the, the walls began to leak oil for a period of time. At first I thought, is what's going on? Is it water? Is it condensation? And it was oil. And then after some period of time later, what happened is this uh, kind of farmer guy, my understanding, a guy named Jerry and his wife, uh, they had this wonderful prayer meeting and went home on a Monday night and were, stayed home Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And on Friday, he went to get his Bible and to open up this particular Bible and beginning in at Psalm 39. So correct me if I'm wrong. You might look this up. But there was oil on that page, and just on that page. And then over a number of days, the oil began to grow. The oil went, continued to go through Psalms, the rest of the way through Psalms, went the rest of the way through the Old Testament, went into the New Testament, went all the way to Revelation, and then after some time started back over at the beginning of Genesis and went from Genesis back to Psalms. So, again, couldn't it be explained, could have never done it. This Bible was leaking oil. And so my friend Krista and I and our ch- a couple of our children came along, and we had an opportunity to talk to people in the community and one of the a good friend of of this couple just to talk about what was that like. And w- so what was really interesting to me was there's a church right across the street from where this the storefront is where they were where they were doing this prayer prayer time, 
and this, this church across the street, not affiliated. It's not a church movement. It's a prayer movement. So it's something God's doing. And so anyway, this church across the street, we, we went to this church and we got to talk to somebody, met a couple people that, that knew of the Bible and knew of the family that had this Bible. And so uh, just what that was like for the town of Dalton. And um, basically what's going on is that hundreds of people every single week are coming to Dalton from all over the planet. From When people hear about it, they come. It's only on Tuesday mornings that they have the Bible available and that they give out for free vials of oil. And this has been going on now for nearly three years, is my understanding. In March, it'll be three years. Uh, sorry, no, in January. I guess in January, it'll be three years. And so they've been giving out this oil, and they, it literally, um, the Bible leaks 20 to 25 gallons of oil per week. They've had it tested. The oil is, uh, it's, it, the substance is like no other substance on the planet. It's close, most closely like mineral oil but it's not the same as mineral oil. So anyway, so we got to see that. And so again, I, I'm hungry after this. Why I'm sharing this is I, I want to see, I want to know what God's doing. And anywhere God is, I want to be there. I am hungry. I'm willing to go anywhere and do anything. I would encourage you to, you know, if you have an opportunity, especially if you live in the South, go to Dalton Tuesday mornings and get some of this oil. So what's happening is this oil that people, this, what I love about it is people are getting this oil just everyday normal Christian people that maybe have never prayed for someone in their life. And it's giving them boldness to go pray. And people are going to hospitals with this oil and they're praying over people and they're seeing others healed. So it's this movement really briefly. There's a town about an hour away called Dawsonville. So then we drove on to Dawsonville and there's something called the North Georgia revival going on. And when we were there, this was several weeks ago, they were on the 99th week of revival. Okay, so um, I won't go into the whole experience that we had, but here's how I know that the revival is real. Okay, because that's, that's a question too, and it's, it's always okay to be, uh, to, what's the word, to be cautious, you know, to not just accept every single thing, because there are frauds out there. That Bible of oil is not a fraud, okay? I, I just, in my heart, I believe it. And then what's going on in Dawsonville? The evidence that the Dawsonville revival is real is this. Every So, again, 99 weeks it's been going on. Now it's been more. But when we were there, it was 99 weeks. The evidence is that every single person that I came in contact with from that church body, every single person, there was something different about them. There was a tenderness, a gentleness, a, a, a place of rest. There was no striving there was no, like, stress. And literally this church on Sunday nights for 99 weeks has had thousands and thousands and thousands of people, again, from all over the globe, come to their church. And they, it's a, their revival is of baptism. So they do baptisms, hundreds of baptisms every Sunday night. And every single person I came into contact with, they were, there was something, they had been transformed. I can't describe it any other way. They had been transformed. And for Five me... Minutes. Oh, I see that. Okay, thank you. So that's great, great timing. And so I'll, I'll kind of tie things together here just to be able to say this, that place of being transformed, this is what God is doing as we will give ourselves over to him. And whatever that looks like for you, for you listening, your story, where you're at, if you're still walking in sin, you've got to turn away from sin. You don't have the power to do it, but the Lord does have the power to do it. You have to begin to walk upright before the Lord. And I am not condemning you. There, I am not perfect. I fall short every single day. I still, I, I sin, but I believe the Lord. The more that I go after him, the more that he is transforming me. I believe that there's going to come a time when someone will look at me and they will no longer see me. They will see him. And it won't be because of anything good in me. It will only be because of the transformation he's done in me. That will only happen as I surrender to him, as I give my life over to him as I will allow him to do a work in me. So yeah, I'm just kind of looking and seeing if there's anything else that I really want to want to be able to share. So the last thing is, this is a word from, from just, just the last year. This is what the Lord said. My kingdom comes. Do you not perceive it? My kingdom, not built by the hands of men, but by the heart of the one true God. I call to you, I whisper, and I cry out to you. 
I will not leave you or forsake you in your time of need if you turn to me. Turn to me and lay yourself down at my feet. Surrender so that I may strengthen you from within. Turn to me and repent. Your life has been written, every word and every deed. Do you not know that I am the great I am? I am can wipe the slate clean. I can wash you white as snow. I can redeem your life. I can save you from this fallen world. My heart is that none would perish, but all would enter into eternal life. You are my son and my daughter. You, yes, even you. There is nothing you can do to separate yourself from me if you will only repent. Turn to me and I will give you life and life abundantly. In these last days, I am pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. My spirit has been made available through my son for such a time as this. There is much coming upon this broken world, but in me and through me, those that call upon my name will be more than conquerors. Let this truth stir in your hearts and your minds an excitement for what is coming, not a dread. In me, there is goodness and mercy. Apart from me, if you choose, there will only be death and destruction and this, as this world and all that is in it will fall. So we repent and we turn away from the ways of this world. We die to self. We allow ourselves to be reborn into the new life, into his kingdom. We cross over as a Hebrew from death to life. We seek the Lord through reading his word and hearing his word. As Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. We, we then must crush our flesh and strive to come into rest as we walk in the spirit. We will experience the truth of God's kingdom coming within us to the degree that we surrender our lives to him so that he can finish the good work that he began in us as he promised that he would do. And all of that, we praise God and we thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. Thank you, John, for this opportunity to speak his truth, that the devil would be defeated. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Rachel, for joining us tonight. What an inspiring and edifying word, a series of words, and um, and just to keep us on the edge of our seats, but also to help us to prioritize what's important right now as we are drawing into the final hours of, uh, well, our time here on this earth. And it's exciting. It really is exciting. And, um, uh, you know, we just have to keep keep close to the Lord and just really stay in a continuous state of confession, uh, repentance, and um, worship. Praise his name. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you Friday night, uh, 8 p.m. for the Friday night prayer vigil, Lord willing. Uh, and um, just be blessed in the name of Jesus. God bless you all.